Well, hi everyone, and welcome again to uh, our sound ministry training. This is now video four. Um, and we are going to look at some of the more intermediate level of uh, things of doing sound on a Sunday morning. Uh, some things that uh, will really help if, yeah, if things get a little bit out of control, <laughs> um, where things start squeaking and squawking, and or someone, uh, I don't know, if, if a channel shorts out or something like that. Um, and we will also be looking at some hardware uh, uh, things as well, which is a bit like our first video when we looked at some of the stage hardware. Um, so here we go. The, the, this is very important because uh, these things really today, will, will they go from just being able to basically mix foldbacks and have a half-decent basic mix through the front of house to actually being able to solve some problems um, that may occur and also just have some general awareness of, of how the desk is used in, in other areas than just, yeah, um, plug-in microphones and, and pianos and guitars and things like that. So first of all, I want to talk about some hardware things. Um, and again, just so you're aware, I will have to move the camera and zoom in and zoom out occasionally, etc. cetera. Um, over here, I'm just going to zoom in to there. You can see that box here. I'm just going to point to it. This box here, um, it is sitting on top of a what we call a wireless receiver. If you remember, just quickly, if you remember back to the first video we did, we talked about the wireless channel receivers, uh, that there were two in the back uh, room with all the amps. Uh, that's, the, that's our third sitting there, so that's for channel 18, but we'll come to that in a minute. Uh, but I actually, I actually just want to really talk about what's on top of it. That there is the... Uh, I suppose you'd call it the splitter box or the distribution box for the sound coming out of the sound desk going into the live stream. Uh, what that does, that box there, is it takes um, exactly what is coming out of the desk, or well, I should probably should say what, what the desk is pumping to the front of house speakers is probably the more accurate way of saying it, and pumps that into the uh, live stream which is being generated by YouTube. Um, it is an exact replication. Uh, it will reproduce an exact replication of what is coming out of the front of house speakers, um, which is also an exact replication of what comes out of the headphones if you just listen to the mix on the headphones. So that's what that is. I I'm letting you know what it is so that I can then say, don't touch it. <laughs> um, the settings that it has, those little knobs on the top, whatever you do, do not play with those knobs. Otherwise, you might blow up people's television speakers at home um, or just make it just a oh, horrific um, mix to listen to on the live stream. And as we've, as I mentioned last Sunday, uh, we've had more and more folks come on board with the live stream. So there are people watching at home. So um, that, that is set like that for a reason. Okay, um, the next bit of hardware that it really is good, one minute, sorry, to be aware of. This is on the, these are on the stage, but I, I, I brought one up here. This is a direct, uh, an active direct box, and we, we just call them DI boxes. Um, these are usually what various, this one's a little bit dirty, um, but these are what it, various instruments are plugged into. So this is what you plug the piano into, um, ultimately the drum kit, I say ultimately because the drum kit has a preamp coming um, out of it uh, uh, um, before it comes into this. Um, electric guitar sometimes, not recommended, but definitely acoustic guitars. And what you've got on one side is the output is a XLR plug, so what, you, what other people would call a microphone lead, um, and that then uh, goes into the stage box wherever you're plugging that channel into so let's just say it hasn't got a label on it but let's just say you know someone had an acoustic guitar plugged into this so you'd have the lead going out into the stage box up there that has the acoustic um, guitar channel um, labeled and and then here of course the the jack lead that's coming out of the guitar would be plugged into the input um, no big deal there that's kind of fairly Simple, you know, you plug in the instrument on one end and you put the XLR lead, sorry, put the XLR lead on the other end and it goes out into the stage. 
However, there are some things uh, that we use at the church, um, as I mentioned just before, the drum kit being one that has a preamp system in its signal. So you have the electric drums, you turn on the electric drums, and the line out of the electric drums doesn't actually go directly into a DI uh, or the stage. It actually goes first into a powered amplifier so that the drummer can turn their own drums up um, in their own sort of sub fallback without affecting the rest of the mix. So they can actually hear what's going on um, and so on. And then there is a lead that comes out of that wedge-shaped amp um, it's a bit like a guitar amp, but it's shaped like a, like a wedge shape, shaped like a fallback, um, and it goes into the DI box. However, the issue with that is, of course, is that by the time you get a lead coming out of a 200 watt amplifier, it's yes, you're going to make it's got quite a lot of gas on that on that signal. That's a that's a extremely extremely strong um, signal, and um, it's. Uh, well, you can you can you can blow a system, and and at the very least you get a fuzzy kind of sound of the drum because it's just so much coming through; it's actually distorting. And this is what we're getting to: this switch here. So the, I don't know if you can make that out. There's a little tiny switch on the on the side of this DI box that is called an attenuation switch. I know it says pad, um, and the A in pad stands for attenuation. I don't know what the the P and the D stands for, but um, you have a 0, a 20, and a 40. I don't know why, but they should have a minus sign in front of all of them, because what it is, is if... I'm just going to flick it up to 0. So 0 is a straight-through signal that's unfiltered. It's just bang straight through, um, bang, bang, straight into the desk. There's no... There's nothing backing up. If you pick 20, it will take off 20 dB off the head of the signal. So it takes takes 20 dB off the top. That's handy for acoustic guitars, because even acoustic guitars will have their little pickup in the actual guitar with its own volume control. Um, this is very important. And the drum one, if this was, I don't think it is, but if this was the drum uh, DI, that sh but would, I was about to say, yeah, would, but at the very least it should be set to for, these really shouldn't have minus signs in front. That gives you a negative 40 dB cut off. So it actually cuts 40 dB off the top of the signal. And what that does is it makes it, it just tames it really. I think of like taming a tiger. You know, um, when you've got a signal coming out of a 200 watt standalone amplifier, it's like, it's like you know, trying to shove a tiger in a box. Um, but that just tames the tiger. That just backs it right off. Um, and it makes it far more controllable. The reason why I say that is, if you remember the last video, you know, these are all, their individual channels. Imagine this is the drum channel, so we've got channel uh, 1 to 16 banks, so we make sure that's that, so this represents 1 to 16. It's labelled down here, drums, so drums is channel 9. Often, uh, if there's um, someone playing drums, sorry to, sorry to sort of rag on the drummers, but at the end of the day, that's the... That's the um, the most intense uh, signal that is coming out of an amp that we experience at church. This is the best example. Uh, one of the key signs that this switch hasn't been switched in any way is that you will see these lights, when they jump up and down as the signal comes through, uh, it'll jump right up to the red and you'll hear the buzzing anyway. Um, so if you get any instrument, it also goes for, what do we got here? Channel 10 is bass, there's the bass channel. Uh, I'm just going to put them up, the sliders up to mark them. An acoustic guitar could be the same thing. If you've got any of these instruments, even the keys, because some keyboards and pianos, I haven't actually had a look at our new piano, but most keyboards and pianos have their own volume. These powered instruments. These are all either powered instruments or instruments that have a preamp to them. And if you are sitting on a Sunday morning and you're seeing these peaks going up to red, I'm just going to move the camera really close so you can see the lights. It says green, think of it like a traffic light, green, amber, red. Um, so if you, see the, if you see the red lights lighting up, um, then you know you're in a bit of trouble. The first port of call is to go down to the stage and check, first of all, where they're plugged into. That's number one. Always remember that, you know, 
one channel at a time and then go through the go through a system. Where is it plugged into? First of all, is it in the plugged in the right bay? Um, and look at the DI. Follow the lead back to the direct to the direct input box, which it will have if it's any one of these. Um, and look at the attenuation switch. If it's maxing out and it's fuzzing and distorting, um, knock 20 off. If it's an acoustic guitar or keys, um, if it's drums or bass, you might need to knock off 40. Sometimes electric guitar can be as well, but usually, at least when I play electric, most people that play electrics, if they're bringing their own amp, they much rather use an, a microphone rather than a direct input. Um, so it just it's just far more controllable. Um, but anyway, that's that's electric, and that doesn't happen that often at Waratah, so you know that's not a huge big deal. Um, a, couple other, a couple of other sorry bits of hardware. Let's go to the uh, second bank of channels. Okay, remember I talked about the things that were labelled along the top here. Um, so um, we talked about radio twenty one and twenty two. A uh, couple of things with that. First of all. Um, we only have three wireless receiver boxes, but we have five wireless microphones. So we have three of these things. I'll just get it out for a minute. Uh, you would have seen these headsets. So that's the the receiver. The oh, sorry, the little transmitter, I should say, box with the with the headset microphone, and that's in it's sitting in its little channel seventeen bag. See how everything's labelled. Okay, and channel 17 labelled on the microphone that um, transmitted there. Uh, so we have three of those headsets, and we have two of these wireless microphones, which are just a simple press and hold until the light comes on, uh, which it won't because the batteries are flat, because this one's been sitting up here for a while. But anyway, there you go. It's a press and hold to turn it on. So we only have three, um, uh, three receiver boxes, but we have five... Uh, microphones that will transmit a signal wirelessly. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if we just jump back to the first bank of channels, you notice here that channel 16 is the headset. That will always be its own thing. Um, that is the headset. It'll always be the headset. That's channel 16. That's what it uses. End of story, right? However, when we move over to the second bank, so 17 to 32, we see a couple of things happen. Seven, channels 17 and 18 are marked headset. I'll just quickly zoom in one minute. Hopefully you can see that. 17 to 18 are marked headset, and that corresponds with the headset 17, as I've got here. Um, so that's the headset 17, channel 17 written on there. And the other channel 18 headset is up on the desk here, but... You know, just trust me that it's up here. <laughs> um, so they use those channels. Um, but also, you will notice, if I just pan a second, that 21 and 22 are, this is Radio 22, and there is the other wireless SM58 microphone is uh, Radio 21. What's the point? The point is, is that we have two, let's call it, sets of wireless microphones, two of these and two of the headsets, two of those, that share the same receiver boxes, which means we cannot have them on at the same time. So you cannot have this microphone, which is Radio 22, on at the same time as someone is trying to use channel 18. It also means um, that sometimes you have to just make sure that if you're using channel 17 wireless headset, it's best to make sure that you have both channel 17, whoops, sorry, channel 17 and 21 unmuted. Make sure they're unmuted, both of them, because it's the same receiver box. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, just think of it as, uh, you know, two of our receiver boxes have to be shared this isn't, again, it's not super advanced stuff. It's not because we don't actually use these very often. Um, this is only once every few months. And uh, far more often, you're just sticking to the headsets. Um, 
Singers will use these headsets. Sorry, I'm just getting it again. So channel 17, usually channel 16 is used for myself like preaching or whoever's, whoever's preaching down the front, um, whoever's speaking that morning uh, will use the channel 16 headset. If we selected that channel, I'm just gonna have a quick selection of it. If we select that channel um, and we zoom in, Turn the light off for a minute. We select, we've selected channel 16. You'll notice that it has no foldbacks because the last thing you want for a speaking microphone is any foldbacks turned up. Um, while we're down this end of the this end of the channel strip, I'm just also going to click. Um, I'm going to click the pulpit channel. So that's the headset, which is channel 16, and then we got pulpit. So here we go, I'm going to activate that. Okay, so that's the pulpit channel, which is channel 15. You will notice as well that the pulpit microphone has no foldbacks, very important. When people are speaking, or sorry, the microphones that people are using to speak, it's very important that they do not uh, have the foldbacks on because then you get feedback like the woo kind of sound happening uh, and that can get quite nasty. Of course, none of that would happen at the moment because all these channels are muted. So I'll just leave them muted because it's just a demonstration. Okay. But channel 17 and 18 are often used by singers. So I've just highlighted channel 17. And in fact, I'm just going to bring it a bit closer. Sorry, just give me two seconds. So we've highlighted channel 17 headset okay now if you noticed um it's nice this is a leftover from sunday i think someone was using it on sunday i think alsa might have been singing with this um with this headset on sunday so we still have leftover from sunday on that headset this wireless microphone if you look at her foldbacks the foldback settings are still there so we can see that I think, I think it was Al, so I might be wrong, but we, whoever it was, on Sunday, we can still see that they were turned up in front left, they were turned up in front right, um, and they had um, some of their voice in keys, which makes sense, because I think if it was Al, so she would have been on piano, and uh, hearing herself singing whilst on piano, and obviously it's turned up in the drums there. So that's the person who is usually sitting in an instrument, so the piano or possibly uh, playing guitar, because obviously you can't hold a microphone if you're, uh, you know, if you if your hands are busy, um, and yeah, so the singers singers that are also playing instruments will often use the headset microphones. So sometimes you will have to do foldbacks um, for the headset microphones. Is is all I'm saying, um, but usually usually um, at least with channel 16 anyway anything that's just speaking you don't worry about foldbacks for but because channel 17 and 18 are often used by musicians that are also playing instruments you have to go through and use uh, the fold set the foldbacks for them as well okay now let's just stay on this channel screen for a minute um, i'm just going to put these over here okay a few other things. Um, so, each channel um, will also have a channel sensitivity. So, I'm just going to go back to. So, look at. Uh, so, we got vocal two there. Um, Sorry, yep, so there's vocal too. Uh, one of the other things that um, we can we can use to control channels so they don't go crazy. So okay, we're assuming now that we've done we've done all the um, foldbacks, okay? So we've done all the foldbacks and now it's um, yeah, now now we're now we're going into some more intermediate stuff. Um, sometimes it is there will be a channel that, uh, you know, someone on the Sunday that was using it before was quite quiet and it could have been turned right up in the sensitivity. Um, and then now someone who wants to use it is very loud and it's blowing the, it's, you know, it's blowing the peaks. Um, 
or, the, or vice versa. Um, let's look at what this is at the moment. So this channel here, so up on the top left hand screen, you have the preamp section of each channel. Um, if you're trying to mix someone, and no matter how much, whether it's foldbacks or even front of house slider, and and they're saying no matter how much you do, they're saying I still can't hear myself, I still can't hear myself, I still can't hear myself. Well, usually that will be um, the channel sensitivity or the preamp. And what's important to realise, I guess, is that each each kind of, there's, there's there's sections on each screen that kind of matches. Um, the actual desk. And you see this top corner here, this on the menu screen, kind of matches this box here. And this is the preamp. Um, at the moment, you might see that this channel is set quite low. I don't know if you can see that. It's, uh, yeah, so it's only got about a quarter sensitivity uh, and a, oh, sorry, on it at the moment. Um, let's just zoom out again. That's going to be quite quiet. Um, so this is vocal too, so that's muted at the moment. So no matter what I do with the slider, um, that, that's just going to, that's going to take a lot to get any sound through. And that's, you know, that's probably honestly, to be really honest, I sing quite loudly. So um, that's the sort of, that's where it would be probably for someone like me um, who sings really, really loudly. But some, you know, there's a lot of people that might not sing as loudly as that. So if someone's complaining, you know, I can't hear myself, I can't hear myself, no matter what you do, chances are their sensitivity is quite low. Um, if, if that channel has quite a, a, or a, a sensitivity that is much, much too low, all of a sudden you can see this screen here is sort of replicated in the little dials and such over here, and you can turn up this gain knob, and that will move. Can you see that moving as you turn it up? Alternatively, if you remember our uh, compass and navigation wheel, you can, you know, click, 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 move, move to, move to the highlight the um, highlight the little red knob. So there it is. It's highlighted. Sorry, get the finger out of the way. So there, it's highlighted. And if I just turn that wheel, that moves it like that. Whatever you do, don't crank it all the way up to there. Um, try and keep it as middle as possible. Um, you also have this screen here. This deals with the various different little frequencies. Um, I'm actually, I'd encourage you not to play around with that. Um, the frequencies, are, we try to set them, um, we try to set them for a reason, basically, to try and, yeah, to, to, to keep them as, as consistent as possible. Um, you can adjust those with the, the compass and wheel, um, or you can use this um, side over here, you know, you selecting your low, mid, high, mid, you know, and then using these knobs up here. But you can probably see, let me just zoom out a bit. You will see the things on the screen get highlighted as I click on them. There you go. See that? It highlights, highlighting all the low, mids. And uh, etc. But again, it's not something that we should be doing on a Sunday morning. This this is something that should be set up long prior to, to anything on on Sunday morning. So yeah, but it is an option in the channel menus. Okay, so let's zoom out a second. Light back on. So there's some uh, so there's some intermediate things um, that you can uh, just be a bit more aware of um, on a Sunday morning as well. Also down here, uh, if you want to use the headphones, there's the headphone jack, and there is a little knob here that you turn up and down that controls the volume that is going into these headphones. I will also let you know about these things. Here, if you if you get if if things aren't working and you can't get any sound coming out of something, um, just check if any of these lights are on. These are these are group mutes. They're probably not. It's probably not the correct way of saying it, but I just call them. But so this one here, this mutes all the foldbacks, for example. Um, you know, this mutes all the vocals. This mutes all the musicians. Um, 
yeah, sometimes if you're just if you're figuring if you're looking at this and it's like, is this mute? no the channel's not muted etc. You can't figure out. Sometimes we accidentally bump one of these and we accidentally mute entire groups of things, um, and so on and so forth. This side panel here that I told you for, to forget about in the last video um, with a bunch of other channels. Oops, sorry about that. Um, this is how we do our fold back using the sliders. So what we do, so forget about the channel inputs. If we click sends on fader like that, that'll flash down here. Oh, you can't see that, sorry. That flashing there, That if you click that button, sends on fader. Um, for whatever channel we had selected, which was channel two beforehand, sends on fader will then um, from left to right show us um, what is what is what and if you look so you click you can click on front fold back to um, rear right and you can see the sliders moving like I said I'm actually not going to teach you how to do that because you can do it all through just leaving that alone you can just select individual channels and do it all by the screen method up the top there which I think is far far easier um, one last thing that we need to be aware of as I zoom out. Some of the other channels that are a bit different from normal, um, one of them is what we call the iPod input. Um, so that is channel 13, 14. So here we go. This is really important. Um, oh, sorry. Notice how when I turned off one channel, I turned off both of them. 13, 14 is linked. Um, we call it the iPod input because it's it's the sort of it's like a headphone jack lead that you would put into an iPod or an MP3 player. But where it is at the moment, of course, is actually in in the laptop. Okay, so that is the best way of thinking of it. I'm just going to turn it up. The best way of thinking of it, if there's a video or a song that people want to play off the laptop, this is the channel. That's why it's not coming through any of the foldbacks. Um, or it shouldn't be anyway, um, that is the laptop channel. So if there's a video or something that needs to be played, um, that's where it's coming through, channel 13, 14. Just think iPod, MP3, music, and so on. Um, that's really important for two reasons. No, number one, um, if we don't turn it up and we don't turn it up nice and loud, people don't hear it in the service. Uh, but number two, nowadays, even more so, like the challenge we had a few weeks ago, um, there's nothing worse than people sitting at home watching a silent video on the screen with nothing coming through their TV speakers. Um, because of, back to this thing over here, um, because of this over here, um, every single thing we do when we're doing sound, we've got to remember is not just about what's happening in the hall anymore, it's also about what is happening at home. Um, so just remember that if the sound, uh, sorry, if the overhead projector person wants to play a video and there's no sound coming through, make sure that channel 13, 14 has been unmuted and turned up. Okay, so that's it for um, the sound training. Anything after this starts getting really sort of into the, into the um, I guess into the skeleton, in, a bit too deep into the, into the, <laughs> yeah, into the, into the bones of, of what the sound stuff is all about. Um, the purpose of all this training was to really let folks know how to pretty much set up and do sound for a standard Sunday morning um, and also to give those who are on the other side of the equation, like the musos and the singers, an appreciation and, and sort of an understanding of some of the complexities involved in it. Um, anything after this, we, we really shouldn't be fiddling with, especially on a, on a Sunday morning. So I'm hoping that um, this made sense and really again I just go back to right back to the very beginning you know at the end of the day it's all about not rushing not rushing doing one thing at a time and uh, if we do that in the end we actually end up doing it faster because it, it's just so much more efficient than trying to keep track of multiple things so I guess the thing that's got nothing to do with the desk but every sound person needs to be aware is that keep calm keep calm no matter what just we've got to really keep calm we've got to bring the calmness to the whole 
um, situation of, of Sunday morning worship and, and practice. It really is. We're not, we're not kidding when we say sound is a ministry. Um, and sometimes there's even a pastoral element of it. So that's really important. I hope you enjoyed finding out a bit more about the sound desk. And it would be really great if you're interested to see some more folks up here uh, giving it a go. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye.